everyone. Welcome to this uh, short video on liquidity risk. I am Vivek Sharma and in this video I will be taking you through the concept of liquidity risk with uh, relevant examples. So what is liquidity risk? Uh, liquidity risk means uh, probability of loss arising because of multiple factors. Uh, I have listed three of them here which are very distinct uh, in terms of liquidity risk. Lack or unavailability of cash to meet various payment requirements uh, could be an example of liquidity risk because uh, if you are a business which has to pay to the suppliers, pay to the ven various vendors and even to your employees and you do not have money to pay to them, then that would be a case of liquidity risk. Uh, this would be a situation uh, in which a business will not have sufficient current assets as we call it as uh, to make uh, uh, payments for various kinds of current liabilities which it has. Uh, but liquidity risk is not just confined to this situation. It is also about uh, liquidating the assets or selling the assets. Uh, so uh, many organizations have assets including investment assets uh, which they have to sell periodically to realize cash. If you are a financial institution, you are very heavy on investment assets like a bank. Bank uh, would typically make investments into securities, into various kinds of bonds uh, and then has to sell it also either to book profit or to take care of certain uh, cash outflow related requirements. So uh, sale of illiquid assets many times so what happens is that they uh, help uh, realize uh, less return, less yield, less price than what would be the perceived or the desired value of that particular asset. So even that can create what is called as the liquidity risk. And one of the key indicator of liquidity risk is when you do not have sufficient buyers or depth in the market. So if we take example of real estate or a house or mortgage as some people would call it as, if you have got a home and you want to dispose it off, but there are not enough buyers for that, that would create what is called as the liquidity risk. Moving further, let me tell you that whatever we have discussed in context of liquidity risk till now can be put under two buckets, trading liquidity risk and funding liquidity risk. Now trading liquidity risk arises when you have to uh, uh, sell an asset particularly or when you have to trade in an asset while funding liquidity risk is more to do with the balance sheet position of a business something that we typically identify with liquidity risks and uh, multiple parameters such as current ratio liquid ratio uh, quick ratio uh, or uh, you know cash ratio which is used here to measure how well placed an organization is in terms of liquidity. So uh, going forward, we have to be very clear that when, when liquidity risk concept is being discussed, it is not just the balance sheet issue. Uh, it is also an issue related to the disposing of the asset, which may purely be a tradable asset such as shares, gold, or any investment in foreign currency that an entity would have made. Uh, what are some of the very uh, you know, uh, simple or clear cut examples of liquidity risk. Let me just share that in this video as well. So first example, a company is not able to pay its suppliers on time as it does not have liquid funds. I've already discussed about it. It can happen many times when COVID happened, many of the organizations did not have uh, sufficient cash to pay to their suppliers and they were trapped in liquidity risk. You know, they were looking for funding in such kind of a situation to overcome this kind of a liquidity risk. The second example where a company wants to sell 10,000 shares, but there are buyers only for 400 shares. This is again an example of trading liquidity risk. You want to dispose of assets, uh, which is in form of investments as shares, but you are not able to dispose it of. And uh, the third example is an asset can be sold with huge haircut. For example, 10 grams of gold can be sold at a price of 44,000 when the market price is 48,000, which means, you know, you when you are trying to dispose of this asset or sell this asset, you take a huge cut here. Let me, let me take you forward and tell you that what could be the indicators of liquidity risk or how do we measure liquidity risk to be precise. So the first point that needs to be noted is the bid ask spread. 
or the difference between buy price and sell price, uh, best buy price and sell price of an asset, which can also be measured with the help of impact cost. Uh, the next point is what kind of trading volumes we are seeing in the assets that we want to deal in. That also indicates the liquidity risk. And finally, the third point which can give us some indication of illiquidity issue with respect to a collateral or any other asset is haircut. Let me kind of elaborate this uh, slowly and give you an idea about each of these points. Now, as you can see here in this particular case, I have taken a market quotation of two assets. This is share of a company which is not th thickly traded. It is thinly traded as you can see in the quantity. Quantity is very less here over here. Uh, uh, so as you see the buy price and the sell price here, uh, which I would like to highlight with the, uh, this particular marker to tell you that you have a buy price and you have a sell price. If you see the difference here, the difference is huge. The difference is 42 rupees in the best buy price and the best sell price. So that's that's the difference that you get here, which shows that the bid ask spread is very high. This is a stock of a company which is trading in the stock market. In spite of trading in the stock market, it has a very significant bid ask spread, but we have to also look at the price. The price is 77,000. So, you know, that spread of 42 rupees also depends upon uh, the price. But even in spite of considering the price, there is a there is an element of element of illiquidity which is getting demonstrated from bid ask spread as well as the quantity that we can see as the buy and the sell quantity. But when I come here to the next example, it is an example of a government security. So when we talk about the government security here in this particular case, you can see that there is a bid price which is here, okay, and there is an ask price which is again here. So if you see the ask price and the bid price difference. It is not much to be very uh, to be very clear here, and you can see that there is hardly any difference. So this indicates what is called as uh, you know as the liquidity risk. When bid ask spread is higher, the liquidity risk is high. So in the first case here, where I'm moving my cursor currently, and which is circled in yellow, is the example of a higher liquidity risk. Now let me move further and tell you that two concepts that we discussed previously, which is related to haircut and impact cost. So haircut is the difference between current market value of an asset and the value ascribed to that asset for the purposes of calculating regulatory capital or loan collateral. Loan collateral. So that's the concept of haircut briefly. And where is the element of liquidity risk in that? The amount of the haircut reflects perceived risk of the asset uh, falling in value in an immediate cash sale or liquidation. So that's the that's the aspect of liquidity that comes into picture with this concept of haircut. And we also have uh, what is called as the impact cost. Impact cost is something which can be measured with the help of bid and the ask price. Something that I discussed in the previous slide. As as you as you can see here, impact cost is measured as ask price minus bid price, where you can take the best bid and the ask price into 100 upon mid price and mid price is nothing but average of the best buy and the best sell price. You add both of them and divide it by two. So these three concepts that I just highlighted, bid ask spread, haircut and impact cost, they give us an idea about the liquidity risk. Now, the question is that when we talk about the liquidity risk, how do we measure the liquidity aspect of an asset? So there are certain assets which have high, which can be called as high quality liquid assets. These assets demonstrate two kinds of characteristics, fundamental characteristics, which I'm going to discuss first, and then we go on to discuss some of the market related characteristics. So fundamental characteristics of high quality liquid asset is that they have low risk. Uh, that is, that is for sure, like a government security, a government security typically has very low risk ease and certainty of valuation. There is no challenge in valuing them. The evaluation process is not very complicated. Low correlation with risk assets, uh, risk uh, assets, which is another factor to be understood, and listed on developed and recognized stock exchanges. So when an asset is listed on the stock exchange, it becomes easier uh, you know, to trade in those uh, particular stocks. Now, second part is what are the market-related characteristics 
when it comes to high quality liquid assets so there has to be an active and sizable market for that particular asset low volatility which should be measured with the help of something like an standard deviation and flight to quality flight to quality here means that when there is an when there is any financial crisis investor will prefer to hold that particular asset and move their investment towards that particular asset so these are some of the characteristics that we have in context of high quality liquid assets in this video as you could see i have explained to you the concept of a uh, liquidity risk i hope you like this video uh, if you have uh, any query related to liquidity risk or any other risk that you want to understand you can write to me on healthofmywealth@gmail.com and before i conclude this video i will request all of you to like this video and like subscribe to my channel also that would really encourage me to make more videos thank you so much